Hello, welcome to a special program titled Practical Applications and Clinical Utility of a PSMA-Targeted Pet Imaging Agent, Implications for Urology and Radiation Oncology. I am your host, Philip Ku, and I'm honored to be here. We'd like to review the continued expansion of the role and utility of PSMA PET CT in management of prostate cancer. Important safety information for Polarify, Piflofolostat F18 injection. Polarify, Piflofolostat F18 injection is a radioactive diagnostic agent indicated for positron emission tomography of prostate-specific membrane antigen, positive lesions in men with prostate cancer, with suspected metastasis who are candidates for initial definitive therapy, with suspected recurrence based on elevated serum prostate-specific antigen level. Important safety information for Polarify, Piflofolostat F18 injection. Contraindications? None. Risk of image misinterpretation. Imaging interpretation errors can occur with Polarify imaging. A negative image does not rule out the presence of prostate cancer, and a positive image does not confirm the presence of prostate cancer. The performance of Polarify for imaging of patients with biochemical evidence of recurrence of prostate cancer seems to be affected by serum PSA levels. The performance of Polarify for imaging of metastatic pelvic lymph nodes prior to initial definitive therapy seems to be affected by risk factors such as Gleason score and tumor stage. Polarify uptake is not specific for prostate cancer and may occur with other types of cancer, as well as non-malignant processes and in normal tissues. Clinical correlation, which may include histopathological evaluation of the suspected prostate cancer site, is recommended. Hypersensitivity reactions. Monitor patients for hypersensitivity reactions, particularly patients with a history of allergy to other drugs and foods. Reactions may be delayed. Always have trained staff and resuscitation equipment available. Radiation risks. Diagnostic radiopharmaceuticals, including Polarify, expose patients to radiation. Radiation exposure is associated with a dose-dependent increased risk of cancer. Ensure safe handling and preparation procedures to protect patients and healthcare workers from unintentional radiation exposure. Advise patients to hydrate before and after administration and to avoid frequently after administration. Adverse reactions. The most frequently reported adverse reactions were headaches, dyskusia, and fatigue occurring at a rate of less than or equal to 2% during clinical studies with Polarify. In addition, a delayed hypersensitivity reaction was reported in one patient with a history of allergic reactions. Drug interactions. Androgen deprivation therapy and other therapies targeting the androgen pathway, such as androgen receptor antagonists, may result in changes in uptake of Polarify in prostate cancer. The effect of these therapies on performance of Polarify PET has not been established. To report suspected adverse reactions for Polarify, Call 1-800-362-2668 or contact FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088 or www.fda.gov medwatch. For important risk and use information about Polarify injection, please see full prescribing information at www.polarify.com slash prescribing information or please contact your local representative. And to kick things off, I'm going to be speaking about next generation imaging in prostate cancer. So conventional imaging techniques, conventional imaging is defined as bone scan and CT. And what we know is that these tools perform not so great in patients with lower PSA levels at biochemical recurrence. So we're familiar with those patients with a PSA, let's say of less than 20 or, or 12 that comes to your office with biochemical recurrence, you get a pet or a bone scan and CT, and more often than not, it's negative. And what we're seeing with bone scans is, is that it's rarely positive in asymptomatic patients or in the absence of a high PSA level. The advantages of bone scans is that it's been around for a long time. It's widely available. And it gives you a whole body picture of where bone mets might be. CT does poorly at detecting recurrent tumor in the surgical bed. And it also d- depends mostly on size and morphology to detect metastatic disease, which leads to poor sensitivity. However, it's good at following treatment response, and it can detect sclerotic bone mets and visceral metastatic disease. Multiparametric MRI is something that we're very familiar with when it comes to characterizing disease up front, and it actually is pretty good at detecting local recurrence. However, it's limited in that usually it's just focused around the pelvis, uh, and it also depends mostly on size criteria for determining whether or not it's metastatic. Because again, it relies mostly on size. And the one disadvantage is that it only focuses on the pelvis. There are whole body MRI techniques 
that can stage the whole body. However, in the U.S. particularly, it, it's a technology and a tool that really hasn't gained much traction. So when we talk about NGI, which stands for Next Generation Imaging, we're really focusing on PET-CT. And Next Generation Imaging allows clinicians to see things that they wouldn't be able to see in the past. And it uses very specialized imaging techniques that allow for this, the acquisition of high uh, resolution images that image physiologic processes. And this is giving us the potential to, to introduce new technologies that can more accurately assess disease burden at lower PSA levels, which really creates a lot of opportunity on the treatment side of prostate cancer. However, there's a lack of standardization and there's a lack of practical application of these tools across the various prostate cancer disease states. So if we look at this cartoon, this cartoon sort of maps out a variety of different processes on a prostate cancer cell that can be targeted with a PET imaging agent and then imaged. And some of these are very familiar with, with us in the audience. And the various probes can be those probes that, that image increased cell metabolism, those probes that target prostate cancer-specific membrane proteins, and those that might bind to the bone matrix uh, to help us image met metastases to the bone. So several NGI options are now approved by the FDA. I guess it all started in 1972 with the FDA approval of sodium fluoride PET, and we saw a resurgence of that maybe 10 years ago, but, but that's sort of dying down again, in large part because these are no longer covered under the National Oncologic PET Registry. 2011 was a landmark year because C11 choline was approved, but it was approved only at the Mayo Clinic. And given its short half-life, access to this was extremely limited and never really reached many of the patients. In 2016, flaciclibine, also known as Aximin PET-CT, was FDA approved. And this really increased access to NGI to a larger patient population, especially in the United States. In 2020, Gallium 68 PSMA 11 was approved, but it was approved just at UCLA and UCSF. So access to, to PSMA 11 was limited. And then in 2021, we're seeing the approval of Polarify. And given the, the half-life, the isotope F18, this is something that will be widely available across the United States. So if we go back and we think about, uh, let's first talk about flaciclovine. Uh, flaciclovine is an amino acid analog, uh, and it's been shown to have increased activity in cancer cells. So it's not necessarily specific for prostate cancer, but prostate cancer will have increased uptake of this, uh, and it won't be metabolized, so then you can image this uh, and create better imaging uh, than you could in the past. And if you look at the performance, Overall, the performance improves as, as the PSA levels go up. And this is not surprising because we expect more disease burden as that PSA level goes up. At a PSA level of less than or equal to 0.79, the whole body positivity rate was around 40 to 44 percent, which is better than anything we've had before then uh, for imaging. And it's something that it created a lot of excitement in the prostate cancer field because we could do a better job at detecting recurrent disease in patients with biochemical recurrence. But PSMA is really where a lot of the focus has been and a lot of where the excitement has been over the years because of a variety of reasons. Number one is because it is more specific for prostate cancer uh, compared to something like flaciclovine. And what we're seeing with PSMA is that there's an overexpression in the prostate cells in patients with prostate cancer. And that's why various agents like gallium-68, PSMA-11, and Polarify were developed to target that uh, protein. And using PET, we can create higher image quality exams that can help depict this in imaging. So if we look at the data of PSMA, and oftentimes I speak about PSMA-targeted PET agents as a group because, in my opinion, they perform as a group. Uh, and I don't think one necessarily is better than the other uh, at this point. So this one trial of PSMA-11 in biochemical recurrence looked at 117 patients, and what it saw was that the detection rate between a PSA level of 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 was 65%. So this, you see, is much better than what we saw with flaciclovine and is much better than anything that we've seen in the past. What's interesting is if you look at the, the distribution of, of where the disease was, not surprisingly, you saw a lot of patients with pelvic lymph node disease only. But what you started to see were patterns that you weren't used to seeing, 
in the pre-PSMA world. So you would see patients with mediastinal lymph node METs only or patients with, with visceral METs only. And again, this is sort of telling us that our understanding of prostate cancer and the metastases, we're only really scratching the surface. And what we've known in the past may not be the truth. And I think it's important for us to start opening our minds to what is out there uh, and what is different now that we could see things more clearly. This study was a head-to-head -head comparison of PSMA-11, gallium-68 PSMA-11 versus flociclovine from Jeremy Clay at UCLA and various team members. The overall detection rate you could see was almost double with PSMA versus flociclovine. And in almost every site, PSMA performed much better than flociclovine. Interestingly, in the prostate bed, the performance for flociclovine was a little better. So here is the chemical structure of the PYL agent, Polarify, and here is the indication that was submitted to the FDA. So number one, it was for men with suspected metastasis who are candidates for initial therapy. And number two, it was to detect suspected recurrence based on elevated PSA levels. So to put it in different words, number one, it was for patients who were just diagnosed, initially diagnosed with prostate cancer. And number two, it's meant for patients who have biochemical recurrence. The proposed dosing and administration is a roughly nine millicurie intravenous injection with imaging to begin one hour following administration to give the radio tracer time to circulate and localize uh, throughout the body. So the Polarify clinical program is a story that's been developing over the past several years. And it all started at Johns Hopkins, uh, and that's where the phase one and two trials were, were first uh, conducted that looked at the biodistribution of metastatic prostate cancer. They also looked at the sensitivity and specificity to detect pelvic lymph node mets in high-risk prostate cancer patients prior to radical prostatectomy. Then this led to the phase two, three Osprey trial, which looked at the sensitivity and specificity to detect pelvic lymph node mets in high-risk prostate cancer prior to RP and sensitivity in metastatic prostate cancer. And then finally, we have the phase three Condor trial, which looked at correct localization rate of Polarify in recurrent prostate cancer. And we'll learn more about these trials. But basically, the data from these trials led to the new drug application in 2020 with commercialization in 2021, which will increase access to a PSMA pet agent significantly across the United States. So if you look at the performance of Polarify PSMA based on PSA levels, what you're seeing is similar to what we've seen in the past with other PSMA agents. It's performing much better and at much lower PSA levels. And at a PSA level of between 0 and 0 0.5, you're seeing a 60% positivity rate, which is pretty good. And again, better than anything we've seen in the past. And if you look at patients with a PSA level of greater than or equal to 2, you have a 92% positivity rate. So most of those patients are going to have something positive on, on a PSMA PET-CT with Polarify. So this slide comes from Michael Hoffman, and it's about his pro-PSMA study uh, that compared PSMA PET-CT versus conventional imaging. And what you saw in that trial was that the accuracy was much better than conventional imaging. It had a greater treatment impact, and you also had fewer uncertain results. And I think that's an important uh, conclusion of that study as well, is that with PSMA PET-CT, you get less equivocation. You get more definitive answers from your imaging specialist about where the disease is and what it means. So in summary, we know that prostate cancer is going to progress in about 30% of patients after initial treatment. NGI will allow for the detection of residual disease post-initial treatment and metastases that have been typically undetectable by conventional imaging. It will lead to a change in your diagnostic approach and your clinical management of these patients. So guidelines for use of imaging need to be optimized so that they can provide succinct practical information for decision making. And this is in continued evolvement uh, as we speak. That being said, conventional imaging today is still the standard of care based on its broad availability. However, we acknowledge its limitations and sensitivity and we acknowledge the fact that with these new agents such as PSMA PET, a landscape change is imminent. There is a growing data about the improvement in outcomes with use of NGI. And the story about oligometastatic disease is still in development, but you could see how that is going to be one of those areas that we, we are able to make a bigger impact on patient care. In the end, NGI is here to stay, 
It will fundamentally change the medical management of prostate cancer. So here are some of my final thoughts with regards to the appropriate use of PSMA PET-CT in prostate cancer. So if we separate into two buckets, I think we should consider using a PSMA PET-CT if you have negative conventional imaging and you still have a high suspicion for metastatic disease. And that high suspicion might be based on the NCCN designation of unfavorable intermediate risk, high risk, or very high risk patients. Or maybe they're based on biomarkers. If you have a high decipher score, a high Polaris score, or Aqua type GPS score, and you have negative conventional imaging, I think you should strongly consider getting a PSMA PET CT. And also, if the risk of metastasis is over 5% by nomogram, and perhaps maybe it's not 5% for you, maybe it's 10% for you, but it's important to think about at what threshold above which the value of getting a PSMA and identifying those sites of METs are important for you and your patients. Right now, I do say that you should have negative conventional imaging, but I think in the future, the resources used for conventional imaging should probably not be, quote unquote, wasted in that setting. And maybe we'll, we'll reach a day where you just go straight to a PSMA PET in certain patient uh, subgroups. At biochemical recurrence, I think every single patient should get a PSMA PET. I think we're seeing data at those low PSA levels and detection rates that is really encouraging. And given what we're seeing with the interventions now based on this information, I think it's important. In those patients, I don't think it's necessary to get conventional imaging because those patients who have a PSA level of 0.3 or 0.5, we know it's going to be negative even before you get the, the bone scan and CT. Uh, and then consider pet, uh, PSMA PET in patients with subsequent recurrence and or progression. Uh, and I refer you to the RADAR3 article that we wrote, um, I think it, roughly two years ago for some additional guidance in those settings. So I thank you for your attention.